I'm really excited to be here today in beautiful Del Mar, California with the ocean and with my guest today. I am so blessed that God has put into my life Judy Solinsky and the message. I, I open your Facebook page and the first thing I see is never give up and follow your dreams and believe. And so I just had to meet you. So thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for inviting me. Your story is amazing. And I just want everybody to have a little glimpse into your life because it truly, truly is a miracle. I believe it's a miracle. And you're an amazing person filled with so much life and I want the whole world to have a little piece of you. So I appreciate it and I will share every bit of it. Yeah. Thank you. Tell us, tell me a little bit because I think we share an unspoken bond that we were both diagnosed with cancer at the age of 39. Am I right? That's right. That was your first diagnosis. Yes. And then tell me what happened. What happened the moment you are diagnosed at 39 years old? What happened to your brain? What was it? Tell us a little bit about all those details. The first thing that came to my mind was total denial that I was too busy for this. Mm -hmm. I gotta go to school, I have to go to work, I have too many things to do. And thank God to a wonderful husband, he made a call to the doctors and said there's something wrong. And while I was in the shower, the nurse called me back and says it seems like you're gonna have to come in. And because I was in such denial, I got lost on the way to the doctor's office even though I've lived in the area for 40 years. It's amazing how strong your mind can be either completely negative uh -huh. or completely positive. And at that moment, it was total denial. And adrenaline. I think at that point, it's your adrenaline just flooding your body yes. in fear and confusion. and The unknown. The unknown. The first thing we all think about is if you're gonna die. That's the first, yes, the first thing. And once you get educated and you learn the steps and you eliminate all negativity in your life, you turn off bad news, mm -hmm. you disassociate yourself from negative people, you surround yourself with things you love, people you love, mm -hmm. a garden, um, the ocean in my case, you keep yourself very busy and you take one day at a time. And what was the name of your cancer? Tell me a little bit about that because I'm not educated as to what the formal name of your cancer was. Mine was uh, carcinoma. Um, it was tumors in my rectum. Okay. It started off as uh, one small one. And by the time uh, they actually went in and did a scope, there were two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I had the surgery to remove them. The problem was I, the surgeon didn't close me up properly, and a week later I had severe hemorrhaging. Oh my goodness. And once again, my husband took care of me and took me to the ER, mm -hmm. and they thought they were gonna examine me being awake, and I says, no way, because <laughs> they were gonna like... put something in my fanny as big as a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary in itself, yes. <laughs> so I was put just under and went into surgery and went through radiation, uh -huh. severe radiation. And I learned, I read, I kept reading about aloe vera. And I took the aloe vera plant and I cut it very thin like fillets. Yes, yes, yes. And I draped it on me. On the three days, three oh times a day in an area about this big. And when I'd go through my treatment, the doctors were questioning, how come you don't have a radiation burn? Yes. I says, every day I'm putting this aloe vera plant, yes, the absolutely. real plant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You can't put the liquid gel in the bottle because it has 0.0% alcohol. So it has to be the raw version. Like the raw version. The, like real raw. The real thing. Wow, and fascinating. The burn did finally show, but I delayed it. Okay, okay. Very interesting. That's mm -hmm. great for everybody to know because we're always looking 
yep. for a solution to yep. that radiation burn. So. And long flowing dresses uh -huh. with, I couldn't wear regular panties. I had to wear men's Calvin Klein. Like uh, the briefs? The briefs with no elastic around oh the leg because mm -hmm. I was all burned. Yeah. And that protected me. Oh my gosh. That's a secret. No, but nobody knows all these little things we have to learn then later. And so as we go through this, but that wasn't just the first time. Then you had cancer a second time. Actually, I've had it three times. Three times. So I, that was uh, anal cancer. And then 22 years later, um, never smoked. Mm -hmm. I've been an athlete my whole life. Mm -hmm and I kept having a cough. And I told, um, my mom says, why are you coughing? And I came up with excuses. It must be the milk, it must be the yogurt, it must be the ice cream, uh, too much dairy. And she said, you need to talk to somebody about it. And I had a cold and they kept saying, oh, you probably got pneumonia. And then one fabulous doctor decided to do an entire scan of my lung. And she said, the reason why you're not getting well and you're coughing is you have first stage lung cancer. Oh my, and how old were you then when you got this diagnosis then? That was 60... Something. Four? <laughs> okay, 64, okay. 64. <gasps> oh my gosh, but what really shocks me though is that you are an athlete. You're an athlete, and so it is so important for us to be aware of our bodies constantly. You, I mean, right now, with you just saying that, you have to be aware of your body. I'm getting chills, because if I wasn't paying attention uh -huh. to why, am, why is the toilet full of blood from the first right, one, right? and why am I coughing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not a tickle. Mm -hmm. And my mother, thank God, and my husband, there's something going on. You've taken three different antibiotics. You're still sick. Right. Something right. is wrong. Right. You have to face it. You need to face it head on yep. and say, "What? let's tackle this. Yes. And you're strong, so. Yes, I was determined. Yeah. So three time cancer survivor, but I love a story that you wrote that I wish you would tell me a little bit more about is after your surgery, you talk about how weak you were. And then a year later, Tell me what accomplishments you have come to from that day that I believe you said you could barely even walk across the room, right? I right. Think if I'm I, saying it right. Yeah, 25 feet was a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love this story. To me, the story is, is this is the essence of this strength. I posted this on Facebook because I grew up in this area and I've had friends that have been on Facebook and have been in my life for over 50 years. And a lot of them are, go through depression or illness and they just sit back and they're accepting it. And I say, just put your shoes by the front door. You don't have to think about walking the first day, just put the shoes by the front door. The second day, open the door put your shoes outside and sit there and look at your shoes. Mm -hmm. It may take a week, but all you have to do is make that one step. Mm -hmm. And within that first day of on a walker, trying to do 25 feet, I was determined to be able to start exercising again. So every day I did something just like you brush your teeth, right, right. just like you brush your hair, you walk. Uh -huh. You never go for distance, you go for time. Okay. Because once you go for distance, you're putting pressure on yourself. Okay. Today, I only walked 100 yards. Oh my God, I don't feel like it, so I'm not gonna do it at all. You go for time. I'm gonna walk 10 minutes. It doesn't matter if oh. you're walking, uh, 20 feet mm -hmm. or 20 yards or a half a mile you have done your 10 minutes and every single day you just do a tiny bit more right and I went from 20 
feet. And it was just February the 3rd, I finished my third uh, treat, my third bout of cancer in 365 days. I'm swimming two miles three times a week oh in the swimming pool or the ocean. I'm hiking, I just came back from Catalina. I'm hiking five miles and going up 600 feet in elevation. Wow. I'm riding my bike 22 miles when I couldn't I even walk it. around the block. I love it. The thing I have to learn, which is a head trip, mm -hmm. is you can't look back on the way you were before. Before. Right. You accept what you have now and you thank God that you're vertical and you're moving. I love it. It is true. You set a new path, a new goal, a new life. And I think that's a goal for anybody because what you've accomplished, there's just no excuses for anybody. I think it's no. a wonderful message and words of wisdom. I think for anything that we're overcoming in any illness, I think those are the greatest words of wisdom. I truly believe that people that have an issue with exercising is they haven't been taught, they haven't been educated that it's okay to do a little bit and we're all unique, we're all different. I wouldn't expect everybody to do anything at my level, just like I met someone who inspired me um, after the second cancer, and he was a Marine. Okay. And they brought the equipment into his room oh. in the hospital, wow. and he trained. Oh my gosh. And he ended up doing a marathon. He ended up doing the Iron Man. Oh my goodness. And he, he talked to me all the time when I was going through treatment. You can do this, you can do this. And he became my mentor. And at this moment, I can't think of his name, but he's very famous because he went from a situation worse than mine. He was fighting two and three types of cancer and he was determined, he went on experimental drugs, mm -hmm. and he ended up doing the Iron Man. That is an amazing accomplishment, just for anybody in the world, but yet, I mean, given the whole situation of yeah. the cancer, that is amazing. It's amazing yeah. how strong the mind is. It's your when mind. When you see a glimpse of hope. and Hope. Yes, I love it. So today, of course, one year later, you we're not just celebrating your running and hiking and swimming accomplishments, but we're also celebrating your launch of your sculptures. And so I'm sitting here with a famous artist too that lives and breathes art and creativity. And so tell us a little bit about that whole life that you have because we're celebrating today. Yes, we are. I, <laughs> I was able to get into um, a very fun gallery in Avalon, Catalina. 26 miles off the coast of California and the woman who owns the gallery is very supportive and loving and that's the kind of people we have to surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It took me five years, doors shutting, people saying no, your art's beautiful but no thank you. I was in a gallery in our very famous town of Laguna Beach and I was taken advantage of Wow! and I pulled my sculptures out of there. I was in another gallery and um, they had no respect for my pieces. They actually put a painting in front of my sculpture Oh my goodness. and my girlfriend told me about this and it was like pulled my sculpture out of uh, there. Yes, because they're beautiful sculptures. They're so beautiful. I want to own one. <laughs> I also had the amazing privilege of being accepted in the first California art show with the National Sculpture Society in New York City. Oh my goodness. And my big stingrays uh -huh. um, were in the gallery at the National Sculpture Society in New York. New York. Oh my and goodness. So never giving up. Oh never God, giving never up. Never giving up. I and I it. and I learned the hearing through <laughs> movie stars. Don't accept no. Don't accept no. Don't right. accept a professional person never accepts no. And I keep saying that. And finally, 
It's true. It's a yes. It's a yes. It's a yes. So yesterday you launched for the first day in Avalon, correct? Yes. It was your kind of grand opening of your, your launching, and that's so exciting that we could be here today to yep. celebrate with you. So yes. this is amazing. Now, tell me a little bit, too. I want to kind of touch a little bit of this subject, too. Your support group. T tell me about your husband, your parents, and oh, tell yeah. me a little bit about that journey as well. Oh, being an artist, um, a lot of people know that our imagination is extremely powerful. And the words, what if, are not good because it's an uncertainty. And I went through oncology counseling okay. that helped me realize that there's a triangle we go through in our brain and if you follow the triangle and stay away from the what ifs okay uh -huh. and only think of now what are you going to do now and the other point of the triangle is everything that makes you happy right now i'm going to garden mm -hmm. i'm going to paint i'm going to cook I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream. I love I'm going to eat pepperoni pizza because I'm going through treatment and I want to do everything that makes me feel good. Yes. Mm -hmm. And eating pepperoni pizza was my security. Uh -huh. <laughs> so everything positive was on the other side of the triangle. So you learn to stay on that side of the triangle. As far as my husband, he's grounded, he's supported, he's loving, he's caring. And he's my guardian angel. He's also my art director. Oh my gosh, I love it. He is, he's an amazing man. He's an amazing man. And you need to surround yourself yes. with that and divorce yourself from negative people. I had a girlfriend ask me if it was contagious. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I, it scares me how some people just don't really know what to say or do, but because they're also fa facing their own fears. And I see that, like, I call it the black eye. That's kind of my thing. When people would look at me, they have these black, deep, like, fear eyes because they're facing their own fears. They don't know how to talk to us. They don't know how to talk to you. They're afraid to get it themselves. They don't, it's, it's very scary just for everybody. So, oh my gosh, so you had an amazing husband that supported you and I believe your mom too was a support. My you. mother is, um, we're Sicilian, very emotional. There's times when my mom will go off crazy and, and uh, be extremely emotional over things. But when it came to me, the strength that my mother showed was rock hard. My mother gave me strength, strength. Uh -huh. and happiness. And we only talked about happy things. We went to, for walks together. My mom never drove. So we would walk on the beach. She'd ask me how I was today. And she, we'd only talk happy things. Happy things and we turned off the news. Uh -huh. Oh, turn the news off. Get, get rid of all the, yes, the unhappy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because we ask a lot of people, how would they try to help somebody? And I think that that is a really important point is that when you're speaking to somebody, maybe don't talk about the negative or drag out the problems. I think it is important to say, keep a positive conversation, keep a forward thinking yes. conversation. Yes. I think that's more helpful yeah. to someone who's going through cancer is yes. to be able to have that conversation of positivity. I think that's important. One uh, phrase that I've learned in helping others is I never said, how are you doing? I said, how are you feeling today? Because how are you feeling today is letting them either tell, the, tell me the good mm -hmm. that they're feeling or the not so good feeling. It opens them up to talk about their pain because we all go through it 
or talk about how many times you threw up mm -hmm. or what homeopathic you're taking to help yourself mm -hmm. or yes. Yes. Uh -huh. whatever. So how are you feeling? I feel like that's the magic word. Yes, I, and it puts it in the moment too. It, it makes it more specific. And so you really can get, kind of help them out too. I think it's yeah. important to talk it out and, and yeah. have that specific conversation with yes. them. Yes, yes. So I, I love your stories and I believe you've got a couple miracles that I'd love to hear about. The first one you said was a bloody situation, but you, you talk about it as a miracle. That certain signs were put into your life that yeah. I think were God sense. Tell me about I, that. I don't go to an organized church. Mm -hmm. I don't have an organized religion, but I'm extremely spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I became even more spiritual. I'm not going to say I had a wow experience. I'm going to say everything I believed just got really, really strong. Mm -hmm. At the age of 39, I was working and I was in school and I had things to do and all of a sudden I got up to get ready for school, go to the bathroom and I think I'm having diarrhea and I look and I am covered in blood everywhere. The toilet was all blood and I one time worked in the grocery store and I read that if you have a um, uh, hemorrhoid oh, uh -huh. you may bleed slightly uh -huh. <laughs> so I called my husband in the bathroom I said I think I have a little hemorrhoid <laughs> a little one and he saw it he said I really believe it's not a little hemorrhoid I think we need to call the doctor yeah. and he was so grounded he wasn't hysterically uh -huh. crazy uh -huh. mm -hmm. and I said I don't have time for this. I'm getting the shower. I have to. He calls the doctor. The nurse calls me back, uh -huh. thanks to my husband, and tells me to come in right away. How strong our mind is, is I got lost. Because your mind is so strong. It was the first time I realized how strong it is. I've lived in the area for 40 years and I got lost going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. denial. I go to the doctor and right away they call and that's another thing if something is wrong they don't wait three days to call you they'll call you that night yes yes that was so the role started to move forward in um, surgery and so uh, that was radiation the sign. that was the sign even though it wasn't really technically related to your cancer it, it was, was not. the sign to get in and you were able to yeah. start treatment and really yes. get going with and that. And that's, the uh, first thing I said is, was that blood related to the cancer? Mm -hmm. And they says, no, we have no idea where that came yeah. from. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's an angel story. Exactly, I love that story. It's an it's angel a story. It's a miracle story, because we got to look at those little signs and just open you, our you eyes. You have to pay attention. Yes, I believe you that. have to uh -huh. listen to that little voice. I believe now tell me about your good friend and how she came into your life as an angel as well from Harvard I believe that um, I when I was in college was my roommate she studied to be a doctor she's an MD PhD her name is Ramona she is a, a, a very guiding angel in my life she came to in my life uh, when I was 60, I, it was three years ago, <laughs> so it's 64, okay. was the first lung cancer, never smoked. So interesting. She came into my life, but more importantly is going back to another doctor and getting that full x-ray of my lung mm -hmm. and seeing, uh, white puffiness where they thought it was pneumonia and it was actually a star representing the type of cancer That's I okay. had Very interesting. and she told me you have cancer that's not pneumonia, pneumonia. and then she took care of me there 
and we have trains by on our I love it. neighborhood. <laughs> um, she took care of me. The third was Ramona. When I called her to tell her it came back less than three years later, I had to have um, my second lobe on the right side removed. And um, only a year ago, it came back and it was in my third lobe. And I was very upset and saying, okay, you took my second lobe out. How come you didn't give me radiation? How come you didn't give me chemo? Right, right, right. And they said, it wasn't in your protocol. So what I'm learning is depending upon what type of cancer you have, there is a protocol they follow. Okay. And if, and if, and they don't deviate from that. So that's why they just took the lobe out and that was the end of it. They think it was small, it's gone. And that was a little upsetting. Because they didn't really radiate around to make sure all the margins had really truly come to an end. Correct. And, okay, so. Or they didn't give me chemo right. to make sure it wasn't traveling. Oh, right. Even though you do a CAT scan and um, full body scan, scan. Uh -huh. They can't see it, yes. but it could be there. Yes, it's the margins just... could always be there. Correct, correct. So, unfortunately, less than three years, it did come back to the lower, the lower lobe, which is the third lobe on the right side, and the surgeon says, we're taking it out. And I says, no. And this is where Mama taught me you always go for a second opinion. Correct. I called. You have to advocate for your own health. I, I, I have to scream that out real quick. You've got to advocate for your own health no matter what. You have to fight mm -hmm. and you have to believe because as my husband taught me, he's in medicine, they are practicing medicine. They're not God. They don't know everything. Right. There could be deviation from what's going on and there may be an alternative. And thank God I went for the alternative. I called Ramona. She connected me with the people at Dana-Farber okay. and they asked for my medical records. She taught me what to send, what to ask. She was my big sister helping me, supporting me, giving me love and support, calling me every day how am I doing? And Dana Farber set me up with a patient advocate. Mm -hmm. yes. They guided me and they, they counseled me. And because of COVID, we were right in the middle of COVID. Oh my God. We did a Zoom meeting. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And thank you, Dana Farber. You <laughs> saved me from having my third lobe removed. removed. Yes. I went through chemo. It was very difficult, but that was another angel. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, I was supposed to go on one type of chemo, and the night before I started, the oncologist- But it was the killer chemo, right? You were yeah. really about to enter like the gamut of a- They were gonna chemo. douse me, yes. mm -hmm. and because of my situation, a day before they called me and says, we are going to give you a lighter um, like a treatment a chemo treatment a lighter treatment mm -hmm. and change your protocol so it won't be so difficult for you yes and so you were blessed with a treatment that was survivable survivable yes yeah and, and I super survivable look at yes. you oh my gosh <laughs> and I and and another friend who studied homeopathic medicine mm -hmm. helped me so I had all these angels coming yes. and helping me and all the positive people that said, if you're nauseous, you don't have to take the um, nausea medication. Because the first time when I was 39, they tried to give it to me and I hallucinated. Oh my God. I, they had given me an IV. For the nausea. For the nausea. Yes, uh -huh. And I was in the hospital and the walls were melting. 
God knows I never took acid, but... <laughs> but that's what it would have been like. <laughs> the walls, you could see the walls oh and the cupboards gosh, were melting, and I was yelling, tell him to stop. Mm -hmm. And my husband was right there. Pull the needle, get rid of that stuff. And they tried to charge me for the drug. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> that was a free ride. <laughs> so I... I um, I went on uh, homeopathic. Oh wow! Um, so it's studying kind of the alternatives too. I think that's important to really, you know, research some options. I think that's yeah, important because they work. Yes. I I okay. didn't take. I took the. Um, uh, I can't remember the nerve pain. I took the nerve pain drug while I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. but then when I got out. My girlfriend told me there's a homeopathic remedy for nerve pain. I took that, it worked. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I really, really think that's important for people to be able to kind of just read and keep an open mind to those You have options. to have an open mind. Yes, yes. You have to educate yourself. Educate yourself, at, be an advocate for yourself, have hope. You gotta have hope. Positive surrounding, great care, caregivers, family, friends, a community that supports you. Yeah. So, my cancer path maybe was not what I had envisioned in my life, but it has been the greatest blessing of my life in a weird kind of way. I know people think that's weird, but it has been a blessing because it has opened my life to people like you. And I'm the happiest person in the world now, getting the opportunity to meet people and bring people like you into my life. And, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's fabulous to meet you over... Uh, Tia bought my note cards at a swim shop uh -huh. where I go swimming and she sent me a message through, was it Instagram? Yeah, Facebook. I think it Facebook. was Facebook. I've like, got to find this lady. Her artwork's amazing. I caught my eye. I was just sitting in there watching my boyfriend buy his things and I, your artwork was so beautiful. I'm like, I, I'm old fashioned. I have to write letters. I have to write notes. And what a more beautiful way than to do it on your beautiful note cards. So and an angel what, brought us to Yes, together. yes, I am telling you, this is the path I was given. It's, it's the most beautiful path. And so what would you want to say to somebody going through this as your, as your closing words, your words of encouragement? What, because you have so much positivity and, and knowledge, what positive words and encouragement would you give to somebody going through this? It's it's very difficult, but you have to get rid of all the negativity in mm -hmm. your life, whether it's what you're thinking or the people that's surrounding you. You have to believe in yourself, your positive heart, your passion. When you're going through this, you have to de dig deep think of the passion what makes you happy bring it out and use it to your fullest ability and you, that begins the healing process yes. if you can believe in yourself and do things that make you happy that's what's going to help you get through this so the power of the mind and the power of love and i can't thank you enough for meeting me on this gorgeous sunday morning the day after your grand opening. I feel special that I get to celebrate a little bit of your life today. Thank you for doing this. And thank you this, for- This is such a, a blessing for me to share your story. It's, uh, once again, the angels brought you into I'm, my life. I'm blessed. I feel like I've known you forever. And yes. I'm gonna keep you forever. <laughs> thank you, thank you for everything. I appreciate it. So go onto our website, She is Cancer Support, and listen to the whole story. and. Have a great day.